Hey guys, Tyler here. For nearly the entire existence of our species, we have tried our absolute best to escape, or at least mitigate, existential risk. From outsmarting predators on the prehistoric, grassy African plains from which our ancestors emerged, to building more resilient artificial defenses against outsiders, the human need for protection has dominated our way of life. Indeed, our survival instinct has at least gotten us this far. Homo sapiens has been around for over 300,000 years, though this is merely the blink of an eye on both geologic and cosmic timescales. In the last few hundred years, however, we've designed new, terrifying ways to threaten our species with extinction, a fate from which we, by definition, can't bounce back. But what exactly are these new tools of destruction that could leave us a mere footnote in the universe's history? And if we somehow avoid demise by our own hands, what kinds of natural disasters could do the job for us? Let's find out. 75,000 years ago, something big happened. One of the most violent supervolcanic eruptions in Earth's history, the youngest Toba eruption, changed the course of what would become our civilization. Occurring at what is now the present-day site of Lake Toba in Sumatra, Indonesia, the youngest Toba eruption is believed to have caused a 6-10 to 10 year long global volcanic winter and possibly a millennium long cooling episode. In 1993, Ann Gibbons, a science journalist, put forth the hypothesis that the Toba event caused a population bottleneck in human evolution about 70,000 years ago. But both the link between Toba and the population bottleneck, as well as the broader global winter theory itself, are controversial and in no way settled science. Stone tools have been found in southern India above and below a thick layer of ash from the youngest Toba eruption, suggesting the dust clouds from the eruption didn't wipe out the local population. But pollen analysis also suggests prolonged deforestation in South Asia. Some researchers have even gone as far as to suggest the Toba eruption influenced human behavioral paradigms including forcing us to adopt new adaptive strategies. This would have played a role in our replacing Neanderthals and other archaic human species as the dominant intelligent life on Earth. In any case, it's worth noting, whether this supervolcano had any effect whatsoever on our evolution, that 70,000 years ago, the human population declined to between 1,000 and 10,000 breeding pairs, from which genetic evidence suggests all modern humans are descended. Experts generally agree that when it comes to our modern civilization, the probability of extinction due to natural causes is quite low. Their reasoning lies in the fact that humanity has existed for hundreds of thousands of years, during which time we have been subject to a roughly constant level of natural risk. If natural risk were high, it is unlikely that we would be here right now. Thus, some researchers have concluded that we can be confident the level of natural risk for extinction is lower than 1 in 14,000, or in other words, less than 1 in 87,000 per year. Other empirical studies have suggested that the likelihood of a comet or asteroid impact large enough to cause human extinction before 2100 is an estimated 1 in a million. Even the chances of a large asteroid colliding with Earth in the next several million years is minimal. The geological record suggests supervolcanic eruptions occur on average once every 50,000 years, but most such eruptions would fail to reach the scale required to wipe us out. But anthropogenic or human-caused risk is another story. Given anthropogenic risk is a relatively new phenomenon in our species' long history, our track record of survival cannot automatically provide similar assurances. 
We are less than a century into the age of nuclear weapons, and by definition, we have no idea what our track record with future technologies will be at all. This has led some thinkers, like the late, great Carl Sagan, to surmise humanity is currently in a time of perils. That is, a uniquely dangerous period in human history, where we are subject to unprecedented risk levels. What industrializing does to a mofo. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Given the limitations of regular observation and modeling, expert opinion is quite often used to instead obtain a probability estimate for various anthropogenic and some natural risks. Informal surveys of experts in various fields often yield a 1 in 5 chance, on average, that we will go extinct by 2100. Among the possible causes these experts entertain are superintelligent AI, nanotechnology weapons, pandemics, and of course, nuclear war, each at 5% likelihood or less. Such experts' opinions should, however, be taken with a grain of salt. Frankly, we are far more likely to succumb to the devastating effects of climate change. Projected sea level rises, even if we switched to renewables tomorrow, would still spell doom for several coastal cities. We're still in the middle of a sixth major mass extinction event, so severe that scientists have termed our current epoch the Anthropocene due to our immense impact on the climate. Disease, famine, droughts and other severe weather events, and mass migrations will only increase in frequency this century. Where this leaves us by 2100 is still a guessing game. A lot of it depends on how effective various nations are at transforming their energy grids, engaging in carbon sequestration, and reducing individual citizens' and companies' carbon footprints. But while it may seem naive in today's climate, pardon the pun, to believe humans will triumph due to our supposedly inherent knack for fixing problems and adapting to new situations, there's nevertheless some reason to be hopeful. Because of recent efforts by various countries to reduce carbon emissions, partly as a result of the Paris Climate Agreement, the so-called worst-case scenario for future global temperature rise is actually less likely than it was estimated to be in the early 2010s. A global temperature rise of 4 degrees Celsius or more by 2100 would practically spell the end of our civilization and possibly the extinction of our species. But scientists now generally believe such a fate for humanity is no longer sealed. Now, mind you, the Paris Agreement is still far less ambitious than it should be, and we've still got a long way to go before we solve climate change. A rise of 2 to 3 degrees Celsius would still have an incredibly adverse effect on populations and ecosystems. But the point is, we've actually made a small but measurable difference in the last decade. And as green technology becomes cheaper, more and more countries will be able to adopt it. Whatever we do, the name of the game will still be adaptation. This could perhaps be our species' greatest strength. Adaptation is a fundamental part of our nature. It's one of the hallmarks of evolution. I've historically been an optimist, and even having gone through, frankly, the trauma that many of us experienced over the past few years, I still find myself comforted by pieces of good news, promoting a more hopeful outlook about the future of the world. That said, I have also become much more of a realist and cynic in recent years. Yes, this might sound a little contradictory, but at the end of the day, what I tend to value is data. Information. And the information that I've presented thus far in this video leads me to believe that while we don't have nothing to worry about over the next century and beyond, we, we have quite a bit to worry about, I still don't think we're doomed. We're going to pull through. For instance, development of superintelligent AI still has numerous hurdles to overcome. There may be something fundamental about consciousness that's nearly impossible to mimic artificially, 
even on the scale of the next few centuries. Even beyond 2100, most AI experts do not believe the technology is likely to cause a Skynet or Matrix-type scenario. This is because the closer we get to creating a general artificial intelligence on par with the human brain, the wider the gap in our knowledge becomes, meaning further advances in AI will start to create diminishing returns. And both public and private investment in creating such technologies may reach a saturation point in the next few decades as economies continue to stagnate, slowing down progress even further. So I've always felt comfortable regarding the concept of a rogue AI disobeying its programming and taking over the world as, well, science fiction. Ditto for the grey goo scenario of nanobots that break loose from a lab and start consuming all organic matter. There will always be safeguards to prevent such a thing from happening, assuming we ever feel the need to build self-replicating machines in the first place, as they may be too complex and inefficient for their own good. Future pandemics may, and probably will, devastate significant swaths of the human population, but our immune systems will continue to adapt, and future breakthroughs in medicine and efforts to combat antibiotic resistance will continue to give us an edge. It's also probable that a thermonuclear war would have difficulty eradicating every last settlement on Earth. Any credible extinction scenario would need to reach into a diverse set of areas, such as the underground subways of major cities, mountains of Tibet, remotest islands in the South Pacific, nuclear submarines, even McMurdo Station in Antarctica. Plus, elaborate bunkers exist for government leaders, as well as plucky YouTubers, to occupy during a nuclear war. Ultimately, though, even if we do survive the next century, or the next few centuries, human extinction is inevitable. Whether it's by the heat death of the universe, or our own evolution into a completely different, unrecognizable form, our species cannot last forever. The Drake Equation, formulated to stimulate dialogue about the number of extraterrestrial civilizations with which we could communicate, estimates a probable lifespan of 10,000 years and a maximum lifespan of 100 million years for a quote-unquote technological civilization, according to Frank Drake's original calculation. But we shouldn't limit the scope of our species to just Earth. Paleontological research suggests vertebrate species separated for 2 million years will generally undergo allotropic speciation, this has led some evolutionary biologists to predict evolutionary radiation among humans dispersed among genetically isolated space colonies will lead to astounding diversity of form and adaptation. Regardless, the debate surrounding just how likely we are to survive into the near future or the far future is, and likely will continue to be, ongoing. But what's clear to me, at least, is that in the next few centuries, probably the next few millennia, we're not going anywhere. I know that this has been a different kind of video from what I normally produce, but this is a topic that has fascinated me for quite a long time. In any event, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you next time.